My name's Aaron Ciotti. Everybody calls me Ciotti. I thought the song was going to end there, but it didn't. Uh, that was Flying Yesterday with the Glide. Uh, the old school beater glide, actually, with the T-Motor F40 Pro 2s. I am starting to get, after two plus months of not flying, uh, that was my third day out flying, and I'm starting to kind of feel it again, which is really nice. Um, and kind of get a little bit dialed in. I'm still very, very sloppy. Um, I, I'm, I've been bouncing around flying a lot of different stuff. The budget rig is on one set of motors. Um, the, uh, the moon goat kind of is, you know, a different frame, different frame geometry. Um, and then a lot of micro stuff. So it's, it's good to actually fly five inch rigs consistently. Um, and that battery kind of convinced me of that because everything just kind of felt right. Um, flying that old school glide frame. With, not old school glide frame, flying that old school uh, glide build. Um, with the motors that I've put thousands of batteries into um, at the all up weight that I've spent most of my time on, which is like right at 600. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's it's good. I'm, I'm feeling good. I, I was starting to wonder if I was ever going to be able to fly worth a shit again. <laughs> um, it's good to, uh, to actually have my... Uh, my... Uh, yeah. Eric Allen, FPV, Afix, FPV, Eric Shannon, Leadfingers, Richard Espander, Frank Nicholas, Finn, FPV, DQ, Squints, FPV in the house. What's up, Adam? Ram Jam, Ben Euler, Benjamin, Banshee, Chopper, FPV, Huckaberry, Banshee, Frenzy, Grant R, Ben again. Uh, ben again. Ben again. 
Uh, I'm a nerd. Ben Euler again. Private Island. Cowboy Roy. Cowboy Roy wins every time. That name. God damn. Uh, Richard Benjamin again and Slow Entropy. If you want to hear your name, you got to get here first. If you want to talk to not first, but uh, you got to get your name on the on the 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 first page of of stuff here. Uh, if you want to talk directly to me, all you've got to do is type CIDFPV. You can put the at in front of it, but you don't have to. If you type CIDFPV into the chat, it will show up in orange, and I will read it. Um, if you don't do that, I'll assume that you guys are just talking to each other. The chat does stay with the stream, so behave, or else a thousand people will see you misbehaving. CIDFPV.com has a million ways that you can support me. Um, you just hanging out is supporting me. It's helping the algorithm. Uh, if you want to click some buttons down here, you can certainly do that. It's free. Uh, over at CIDFTV.com, there's a bunch of different ways that uh, you can continue to support me even more. Uh, there's a Patreon. There's a link to my Patreon page, which is the most helpful thing. Uh, there's a link to my Etsy store with a whole bunch of amazing stickers and some random hardware. Uh, there's a link over to Teespring where you can get some cool t-shirts and mugs and all kinds of nonsense. Uh, there's a link to Fiverr where I can work for you. I want to help you fly better. Uh, I'm doing uh, coaching sessions uh, in the simulator. Uh, I want to also help you build better. I'm specking out builds. I've got four plus years in the micros. Um, I know which motors work, which ones don't, which frames suck, uh, stuff like that. Uh, and I also want to help you tune better. Uh, if you've got a rig and a specific set of like tuning parameters that you're looking for, I can help you out. I've been tuning micros for a long, long, long time. Tuning micros is basically swinging with a weighted bat because everything tries to prevent you from tuning them well. Um, and then there's a bunch of affiliate links over there. If you find yourself doing an order on Amazon, get FPV, uh, uh, FPV Cycle, FPV Crate, uh, umagod.com, Banggood, there's a bunch. Um, if you're doing any order for anything on those websites, if you somehow remember to hit my affiliate link before that order goes in, uh, I will get 6% of that order for nothing. Like, you can still use coupon codes. You can still do all the things. It is free money. So if you can remember to do it, that'll be awesome because this is my full-time job now. Um, it is a little bit of a struggle, but it's worth it because I get to hang out and work for you guys. Um, so, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. You guys have been doing amazing. Uh, it's very, very, very slowly growing, but it's still growing. So that's all that matters. Uh, that's why I'm still here. I'm going to rock this shit till the wheels fall off. Um, hopefully not literally, but eh, it's a good possibility. Eric Allen tagged me and said, what's up? DQ said, what's up, chat? Uh, be right back in a rip five after work packs real quick. Very cool. Banshee Frenzy saying, hey, Squints FPV saying, the Instagram story of you recording the streak earlier was so was so tranquil. Uh, I must have re replayed it like 12 times. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> nice, Adam. Uh, yeah, if you're not already uh, following me over on Instagram, go follow me. Uh, I'm CIDFPV everywhere. C-I-O-T-T-I-F-P-V. I posted about a million stories today. I'm very... Uh, I'm very all or nothing with Instagram. Like, I don't know. I just, I, I, I try to not like, I, I have every single notification turned off on my phone, um, which really, really, really helps. Um, and I try just to like have this be more of like a telephone than anything else. Uh, but there are times where I'm like, ooh, ooh, I haven't posted on Instagram in a couple days. I got to do that. Uh, so I'll like get in the mindset of thinking about Instagram and then I'll go and do a whole bunch of stuff all at once. And then you won't hear from me for three days. <laughs> Just kind of the way it goes. Huckleberry saying hello. Grant R saying, uh, I look forward to your streams each day. Thank you for all that you do, man. Thank you for saying that, Grant. Very, very cool of you. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I'm trying to have like kind of office hours for you guys so that, you know, pretty much every day at kind of random times. I, I do try to kind of also mix up the times a little bit so that like I can catch people that are in different parts of the world. Um, I have a pretty big audience outside of the US um, and then uh, catch you guys maybe like when you're at work and you have some spare time, uh, catch you when you get home. Um, yeah, mix it up a little bit. Uh... Do, 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 do. Slow Entropy says, first time I've caught the start of the live stream. Yay me. You got it, brother. Um, what What's happening? What a thrill. Cheers, mate. What's, what's, what's going on? 
Freeloader, what are you doing? What happened? I looked at all of Slow Entropy's posts. Everything looks fine. Um, uh, where were we? Huckleberry says, thank God it's Friday. Spander says, hey, what cam angle are you running? 30 degrees on everything. Uh, 30 degrees is just, like, it, it, you can sort of do it all. If you put the nose down really far, um, you can get, like, 50, 60 degrees of, of pitch angle and still be able to see where you're going at the very top of the uh, FPV view. Uh, or you can come damn near to a complete stop and be almost completely flat and still see what's going on in front of you down at the very bottom of the FPV view. Um, so yeah, 30 degrees is, uh, is, is the most sort of versatile, I guess. Uh, Squint says, now we just need to get you out on Sunday. Yeah, probably never gonna happen, Adam. I mean, it, it's this is my job, so I, yeah, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta do my job, and my job is seven days a week, and um, that's you know, that's working for yourself. Um, Jay Furness says recommendation recommended motors for four inch BQE. Uh, sort of depends on which BQE, but typically, um, and, and here's the other thing, Furna. Oh, BQE pickpocket. Okay. So that is a toothpick build. Um, on a toothpick build, you could probably get away with a little bit smaller of a propeller, uh, or uh, smaller of a motor rather. So four inch is still kind of like brand new. Uh, so we really haven't like locked in on, um, on like what works best for four inch props yet and, and four inch setups. Um, so take this with a, a grain of salt, but uh, for a toothpick four inch, you can pro I mean, the I would say like, so you're probably gonna end up running a bi-blade because that's kind of the point of toothpicks is just to keep every, I mean, you wouldn't be building a toothpick if you didn't want something that's absolutely as light as possible, right? So um, I'm assuming it's gonna be a bi-blade. Um, at that point, I mean, if you wanted to make it into like a long range rig, you could go all the way down to like a 1404. Uh, if you want something that actually performs well, um, <clears throat> I would maybe look at the X Nova 1804. Uh, that's going to be a really good, although that's M5 nut. And I don't know if any of the, uh, I don't know if any of the four inch by blades are, uh, are M5 nut. I think they might all be. Oh no, there's a there's a X Nova has an 1804 T mount. Yeah yeah yeah. You're good to go. Um, X Nova 1804. They do sell it in a T mount um, or go all the way down to 1404s if you just want a long range rig. Uh, and make sure you get the highest KV as we always talk about. And then if it's too much KV, you're just gonna scale it down in the pit tab. Uh, Word FPV says, when a simple fix turns into a shitstorm, I'm glad you're on so I can move past this BS for a while. What up, CI FPV? Word FPV just, uh, in one sentence, completely, um, uh, covered the entire FPV experience. Let me make sure that nobody's texting me, that the stream is broken. Nah, it looks good. Looks like we are, all right. Although, wait, hold on. Let me go over here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Nope, we're good. All right, cool. Uh, Dauntless says, I second that. Love looking forward to your streams. Thanks, guys. Um, Dan Richmond says, hello, hello. Smitty FPV with a five squiggly. Is that, that's not a pound. What is that? What's that? What's that character? Is it a character? I think it's a character. Oh, it's the Euro. Very cool. Five Euros. Smitty FPV, thank you very much. He says, keep on going strong, man. Something for health insurance. Uh, I'd like to give more, but drone parts are expensive. Love what you're doing for the hobby. Uh, super awesome of you, Smitty. Um, five bucks is a lot of money, man. It's uh, I'm, a, I'm a broke bastard, so I understand the value of a fiver. And we are going to come in here and we are going to move this to 460 exchange rate. Let's say 468. I bet you that's, I bet you uh, five euros is roughly eight uh, cheeseburger dollars. Thank you, dude. Very, very cool of you. Um, much appreciated. 
Athix says, I'm one of your mobile watchers. I'll throw the stream on and listen while slinging cable. Nice, Athix. Um, Furnace says, thanks, man. You're certainly welcome. Private Island says, unmaidened build. Uh, motors sound whistly or slightly chirpy, uh, but only with the PID loop active. Yep. Uh, normal sound with air mode off. What's going on? Uh, what would be your first move? Uh, so you're going to bring those PIDs down, Private Island. Basically, you've got a situation there where too many vibrations are making their way into the gyro. Um, well, so one of two things. Either your, PID, either your PIDs are cranked too high already um, for the amount of vibes that are getting into the gyro, or if you're on stock PIDs, there are just straight up too many vibes getting into the gyro. So... Um, I believe you're on my Patreon. Uh, go into Tech Talk at the very top of the Patreon page and look for the troubleshooting motor heat articles that I've written in there um, and just work through those step by step. Uh, it's the exact, motors get hot because there are too many vibes getting into the gyro. So it's, it's gonna be the exact same troubleshoot. Uh, Private says, never adjusted a PID in my life. Yeah, so you're, you're in a situation where you've got too many vibes getting in there. Technically speaking, you could bring the PIDs down but then the rig would fly like a bag of smashed assholes. So don't do that. Figure out the problem itself. Don't just put a band-aid on it and have something that flies like shit. Um, but yeah, basically what's going on is you've got a situation where there's too many vibes making it into the gyro. Um, so just when you're like, it, it really helps some to, like, I just, I explain things in very specific ways so that you guys can sort of like, approach these issues holistically, um, not just like, oh, I have to fix the PIDs, right? Like, the PIDs are one tiny little part of the entire system. The entire system is really important, and you have to respect the whole system. Um, so, yeah, when you, when you kind of, you want to just, when, when you start to have issues with your rigs, don't do this, like, don't get super, like, don't put the blinders on and, and just try to, you know, tune it out or filter it out or any of that kind of stuff. Think about the whole system. Think about, like, what happened last time I flew it. Um, did I smash it into a tree? Oh, okay, that explains why it keeps catching on fire. Um, so, when I say that you've got too many vibrations getting into the gyro, what I'm hoping is that you'll you'll think about this thing from, like, a full... And, and that's what that article... That, that's what the, uh, the Motor Heat article on the Patreon page is going to walk you through. Um, the steps involved in finding the vibrations. But again, I'm trying to, to like arm you guys with the knowledge um, so that when that kind of stuff happens, you can just sort of think through it. Like you don't have to just, you can kind of think through the different things that it could be and just kind of look at it and be like, all right. So Ciati said, there's too many vibes getting into the gyro. So the gyro is on my flight controller. So let me look at my flight controller real quick. All right, so the grommets are there. Everything looks good on the grommets. Is there anything? So he said too many vibes. What if something was hitting the flight controller? That would put some bad vibes in it, right? Okay, so let me, are there any wires hitting it? Nope, okay, we're good there. Um, maybe is it pushing up against something? Is it, okay, so let's look at that. Um, you know, let me, let me look at, can I, can I move it around a little bit? Yeah, it's, it's sitting nice on the, on the, on the rubbers, so they should be isolating it a little bit. Okay, so what else is going on here? Let me look at the frame. Maybe if one of the arms is kind of wobbly, uh, well, I guess it could be like these screws, right? Like, let's look at these screws, and is there any screw that's backed out? Because that could cause some, some vibrations there, right? So just like, just go through like the full thing. Just look for vibrations and just kind of understand that, like the vibes can come from everywhere, right? The the propellers could be bent. The propellers themselves could be out of balance. Like there, this hasn't happened in a while, but um, there have been propellers that are just mismanufactured and they're just not balanced right out of the package. Um, and then you can kind of look look at your motors. Like, all right, well, there's a big dig in the side of the motor there. That's that's where I smacked it into the tree last week. Maybe the motor is all bent and out of balance. And then you can kind of look at your what so. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, just sort of go through it step by step by step and um, hopefully find... Or, you know, the these motors, like, are very notchy. I know Ciotti's talked about how notchy motors are going to... Just, yeah, just, like, get get your head in the into the place of, like, searching for vibes, right? Like, when you spin the motor, here's the... Here's, like, here's the end-all be-all with notchy motors, right? 
if you have a Nachi motor on your rig and you go like that, you can feel the vibrations. Done. <laughs> like no more exp like no more discussion needed about Nachi motors being a problem, right? We know that vibrations are a problem. Nachi motors make vibrations. There we go. Um, ben Watkins says, what motors are you using for three inch freestyle these days? I need something for a heavier Bang God 3. Uh, it depends on the all up weight of the rig, Ben. If you're in the 200 to 210 or so gram range, uh, these Brother Hobby 1504 and a halfs are the absolute best I've found. found. Uh, if you're pushing like 250, 240, 260, 270 all up weight, uh, you want to go with the X Nova 1804s for sure. Uh, and then in terms of KV, always just get the highest and then scale it up and down in beta flight in the PIDs tab. Uh, Double A says, hello. Questy Williams says, what do you think of Catalyst Machine Works frames like the Smooth Operator? Um, Catalyst's frames, in my opinion, are a little bit over-designed. Um, there's a lot going on that makes them heavy. Um, yes, they're strong, but I don't like heavy frames, um, and I like frames that are easy to work on, and that's the other thing. Like, because of the fact that they're over-designed, they become really difficult to work on because there's 18 pieces of carbon going upside down and backwards and left and right. Um, so they're not for me. Uh, but if you want to build a rig that's heavy um, and you like sort of the engineering side of them, maybe it's the frame for you. Um, but I, I prefer to, to have all of my parts and pieces be as light as possible. And then if the, whole, if the total all up weight of the rig is too light, I would rather put a heavier battery on it, right? Like leaving, like building the rig as light as possible is going to give you more headroom for different batteries uh, without the rigs being too heavy for the given prop size. Um, so yeah, there you go. Uh, Drone Goats didn't tag me, but I just happened to see his question. He says, how do you change your PIDs rates to be able to fix prop wash on an 85 millimeter frame on 1103 11,000s? Uh, so Drone Goats, PIDs are one thing, rates are a second, or, or a totally separate thing. Rates are how the quad reacts when you put the sticks in a certain position. So if you put the sticks all the way out against the plastic, the rates are going to control how quickly the rig spins when it's all the way out. Uh, if you just push the sticks a little bit, there's a different rate, uh, there, there's a different value in the rates that's gonna control how little or how fast the, the, the rig spins at that smaller um, stick position, uh, uh, locate, stick location, I guess we could say. Uh, PIDs are error correction, uh, and the way that error correction works is any, like, so zero error is this right here. Nothing's moving, nothing's happening, this is zero error. This is error. This, this could be error from wind blowing on it, this could be error for your question, for you fly straight ahead, you turn completely around, and now you're in your dirty air. And the dirty air is very turbulent and that can create the rig to, to do prop washy things. Um, to defeat prop wash, it's basically D-gain, but you typically can't just crank D-gain up without also adding P-gain and P-gain also helps with the prop wash. Uh, so, but all of that being said, uh, there are a lot of other ways to defeat prop wash and, and a lot of, quite frankly, better ways to defeat prop wash. Uh, the big one is uh, <clears throat> fixing your response time. So an 85, uh, 65, 75, 85, so that's a two inch. Uh, so that's a two inch propeller that you've got on 1103s. So 1103s are a little small for a two inch propeller. Uh, that, so one of the ways that you're gonna be able to get, uh, help out with prop wash is to move to a better, uh, a motor that's better suited for that prop size. And that would be like a 1204 uh, or even like a 1303 would probably work really good or even a 1304 on a two inch propeller. So that would be the best way because you're mechanically fixing the issue. Um, if you don't want to spend any money, 
if you don't want to spend any money, what you can do is add like 10 points to your to all three of your P gains and add uh, 10 points to all of your D maxes uh, and also raise your uh, D, uh, your D min advance and your D min gain all the way up to 50 each. Um, that's kind of all that I can really dig into on, on the live stream since a bunch of other questions are piling in. Um, this is something that I, th this is a service that I do actually offer over on Fiverr, which you can get to from CIDFPV.com. Uh, we can jump on Skype or Zoom and spend a half an hour really dialing that rig in, getting your filters set. There's a lot more than, uh, than this that goes into it. Um, I, to really dig into it, I need to know things like who the motors are made by, whether or not they're notchy, what the frame is. Um, there's a lot of different stuff that we go over and that's, that's why it just, it takes some time. Um, but yeah, there's a couple things for you to try. Uh, again, the best thing that you could possibly do is get that onto a, a motor that's better suited for that two inch propeller, which is going to be a 1204 or a 1303 or a 1304. Um, Private Island says, uh, I'm co of course I'm going to do everything I can before adjusting a PID ever. Uh, these are brand new motors, never flown. Uh, so what might be causing vibrations in every one of all brand new mo motors, remember unmaidened. Um, motors run fine when the PID loop is not active, no props. That doesn't really matter. Um, once the PID loop is active, that's where like all the, the shit can go down. Um, and they're the smoothest motors I've ever felt, uh, Xylo Stealth 2206s. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, the main question that I'm seeing here from Private Island is, uh, so what might be causing vibrations in every one of all brand new motors? I mean, if, if, you, if you know that it's the motors, then the only thing that could be doing that is if those motors are not balanced, if those motors weren't balanced. Um, you can check that by looking, this is going to be hard. hard for me to show you guys, but it's actually really important. Um, you can check that by pulling one of the bells off of the motors and looking for the balancing mud is what it's called. Um, it's, it's called balancing mud because it looks like mud. I can't possibly imagine that those motors are not balanced, but just for for the good of the collective, I'm going to show you guys this because micro motors, uh, certain micro motors are not balanced at the factory. Uh, the the motor manufacturers will use the excuse that uh, the motor is too small, which is total bullshit. It's just them being lazy and or wanting to reduce the cost of the motor. So let me look for the balancing mud in here. All right, so there it is. Um, right there is the balancing mud. It is almost always above the magnets, and it's just this like shit. It's just this like junk in here, um, right there. Versus, look at the magnet next to it. See how the magnet next to it is nice and clean, and that one's not clean. It just looks like dirt, right? But it's not. It's balancing mud. See the tops of all these other magnets are nice and clean. So yeah, um, that is the only possible, like if you're sure that the motors themselves are out of balance, I mean, at that point, you just gotta take those motors off, right? Um, but I have a feeling that you don't know that because I have a feeling that they are balanced um, because I've never seen a five inch motor that hasn't been dynamically balanced with the, with the mud. Um, so yeah, pull up that, uh, pull up that motor heat troubleshooting guide and it's just going to walk you step by step by step by step by step. There's, there's a whole bunch. It's, it's a little bit too much for me to, to, um, uh, to, you know, go top to bottom with on the stream here. Sick of life 90 says what's going on. Just got back from four packs, four spots. Time to retune. Why? What happened? Um, or were you just not happy with the tune? Uh, Johnny Five Smith says, "Hope you're having a blast building lately. I've been, uh, I've been getting bind and flies, then adding the motors I like to them. Uh, they're so solid nowadays, can't beat them. That's actually not a terrible idea, Johnny Five. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm kind of into that. Private Island says, unbalanced motors don't become, unbalanced motors don't become 
instantly balanced when the PID tune is inactive. Um, it's not that the motors are unbalanced. Um, I mean, they kind of do, Private. Like, I mean, like, I, obviously, they, the, the motors don't become balanced, but the system becomes balanced. Like, with the PID loop turned off, the, the system is just going to send 100 RPM, let's say, to the motors. Um, and everything is going to be totally fine and nice and smooth um, because there's no feedback loop active. As soon as you turn the PID loop on, the error correction, if there's too many vibes, it becomes a feedback loop. So, and, and these vibrations are happening at thousands of hertz. So you can't see them. A lot of times you can't even feel them. Um, so yeah, that, that's what's going on there. Uh, drone pilot saying, hey, uh, Private Island says, no, the motors are balanced and the PID loop is making the vibration. Uh, so what's going on? I want air mode. Yeah, Private on you, you just, again, you, you just got to work through that. You got to work through that. It, it, it's it's just too much for me to, to take you step by step by step through. There, there's just like a bunch of, a bunch of steps that you got to go through. You just, yeah, it's a system, right? Like we always talk about how like these things are a, a full system, like top to bottom. Uh, it could be the motors. It could be the arms. It could be loose screws. It could be the soft mounting on the flight controller. It could be a wire banging into the so flight controller. Brrr, down and then down and down and down and down we go. <clears throat> Sick of Life 90 says, I just switched from Gemfan 3028x3s to Gemfan 3018x2s and need to play with the tune a bit. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, that's a big, big, big difference. Your response times are going to get like damn near cut in half um, going from a 3028 to a 3018. Um, so yeah, Sick of Life, you might actually need to pull your PIDs down because your response time just got so much better by lightening up the rotating assembly. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, you never know. Drone Pilot says, uh, have you made your spreadsheet with motors? I've been working on it here and there. Um, it's a uh, work in progress. I'm trying to spread myself out. One of the things that I need to do um, to beat off the mental illness with a stick is, and, and to beat off the burnout with a stick really, um, is to um, just kind of like mix it up and, and like work on, on things a little bit at a time. Um, so like at any given time, I'll have like 30 or 40 things that I'm kind of working on and I'll jump into it and I'll do like an hour worth of work on it and then I won't touch it again for a couple weeks. Um, that's, that's become like really, really important uh, for me because I was, I was really starting to burn out towards the end of the year last year. Um, so yeah, you'll, uh, you'll see it again. I was actually just working on it the other night. Um, maybe like Tuesday night I was on the couch and I had the laptop and I stumbled across. It's why I have so many tabs open, um, is because the tabs are like my reminders and like every once in a while I'll just jump into the tabs and I'll just kind of click through tabs and then I'll see one like the half done and I'm like, oh cool. Let me work on this one. Blah, 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 blah. I'll spend an hour. Um, uh, Sick of Life, uh, Sick of Life says I'm gonna try a small P to D bump, uh, like two to three points. It's mostly prop wash, and I'm trying to avoid adding any I term. Man, I haven't touched I term in forever. Uh, Drone Pilot says I'm building a heavy 4S lithium ion uh, with Vista to carry an Insta 360 light camera, but the quad will be heavy, three inch. Interesting, very interesting. Uh, Bad Conquer just typed Ciotti, which didn't light up an orange, but I happened to see it. Um, for anybody just joining that's new, if you type Ciotti FPV, like you see a bunch of people doing, uh, it's gonna light your, it's gonna light Ciotti FPV up in orange. Um, sometimes I see when you guys don't do it. Uh, I'm glad that I did because this looks like a cool question. Bad Conquer says, uh, what do you think about the new upcoming Reckon 4? Uh, us, I'm glad you told me what it is because I haven't heard of it. A sub 250 4S freestyle designed by Dave C with 1804 uh, 3500 KV. Um, I mean, that's uh, that's pretty. I mean, that's just basically a um, an acrobrat, really. Like all of those specs are pretty much exactly the way that I build my acrobrats. So as long as the frame is strong, it gets the thumbs up for me. That's those are the right. Um, that is the right size motor for a three inch prop. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a good combo. It's, um, 
when you get the three inch prop, when you put like 250 ish uh, grams all up weight on a three inch prop, it's a bit much. Uh, three inch props are a better match for 200 ish grams all up weight. Um, but some people like that. Some people like the, the heavier, smaller prop setup so that you can really throw it. Um, I don't like it because when you come off the throttle, it falls out of the sky really quickly. Um, and that's really not what 5-inch rigs feel like. I try to build all of my micros to feel as similar as possible to 5-inch rigs so that when I bounce back and forth between them, which just demolishes your muscle memory, um, they're, they're as similar as possible. Uh, it's all good, Freelo Joe, no worries. You only got uh, one person, and I forget who it is, but I, I think they're back already. I hope they're back already. Um, Akash Jana says, I have a problem where my quad starts vibrating when I punch throttle and cut it, especially when trying to split S. Um, I need to do uh, to to really dig into that Akash. I need to know a lot more. I need to know uh, what frame it is, what motors, what prop size, what propellers, um, what tuning you've done so far, what filtering you've done so far, uh, like what version of Betaflight you're on. Um, tell me everything, basically, uh, so that I have some chance of of troubleshooting it. Um, also, do me a favor and try to like refine what you're saying there a little bit. I don't necessarily understand what you mean when you say the quad starts vibrating when I punch throttle and cut it. Like, is it vibrating when you punch the throttle or is it vibrating when you cut the throttle? Um, and then you say, especially when trying a split S. So a split S usually happens when, when so with a split S you come off the throttle, you rotate it around and then it falls down into, and it can fall into its prop wash and then you add throttle again. Split S's, if, if you're getting prop wash during split S's, it's a piloting problem. You're picking up the throttle probably too late, um, but it kind of depends. Um, so yeah, give me some more info and I'll give it a shot. Free, uh, Jason Crabtree says, how's the rip tweak coming? It's good, uh, as soon as I get caught up on chat, we're gonna dig back into it and hopefully get it finished. Uh, Drone Pilot says, uh, I was thinking 1207, 5000 KV for that three inch. Your thoughts? 1106, uh, 3800 KV get hit too easy. Um, I'm not a fan of those hugely tall statered motors, Drone Pilot, as you probably know by now. Um, so I wouldn't personally like it on, on 1207s or even 1106s. I really like motors with. With, especially for micros, I like motors with very short stators, four millimeters tall, maybe five millimeters tall. Um, but it sounds like you're looking for efficiency. So with efficiency, the extra stator height does more work. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it, that could be good. I don't really have any experience. Like the only experience I have with those taller stator motors is like I put them on and then I'm just like, wow, this feels awful. And I take them right off. <laughs> so like, I, I, I can't really talk in an educated sense um, about, oh, get hot too easy. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Um, that makes much more sense. Um, yeah, I just, I, I, I don't fly those crazy tall stator motors. Um, so I, I just can't give you like, you know, it would just be me guessing. And that's, that's I really try to not do that. Uh, Corollos Potro says, uh, with a 499 super chat, Corollos, thank you, thank you. Uh, okay, enough about four inch, uh, three inch quads. Uh, I somehow was able to fly 6S smoothly on 2800 KV, uh, uh, Lumineer gate breaker race props. Uh, did you, I'm assuming that you motor scaled it down, Corollos? Uh, if not, that's a hell of an ESC to be able to handle that. Um, or your, um... <clears throat> or your uh, your pid loop is down low enough where it's not. Although no, I, like we were talking about with Mark the other day, the pid loop is more about. T I always I describe the pid loop. It's it's funny. Like the the pid gains are based on time and speed, not power. But it's incredibly difficult to explain that. So I stopped trying to explain it that way like long, long, long ago. Um, and I gotta be careful 
because and I actually like damn near forgot like when when Mark said that on the stream I guess it was last week like I don't know if you guys noticed but I was like all oh, right <laughs> like I, it I, it's something that I'd read long ago in I don't know where I read it maybe the the very first iteration of the tuning notes and back in like three five seven or four oh um so yeah what um or it's a really clean rig would would be the other thing um but all of that being said make sure you get that motor scale down dude because if you like clip a branch or something like that it's going to put a little bit of a vibration in there and that pid loop is going to be able to access 6s 2800 kv on very pitchy props and it's going to blow that esc right the hell on up so Definitely get that motor scale down. I would bring that motor scaling down to like 60%. Um, Corolla says no throttle limit. So throttle limit is not going to help. Um, you need to do motor scaling because the throttle limit doesn't affect the PIDs. And on that setup, the PIDs are what's going to blow that ESC up for sure. Uh, as soon as you get a little bit of a vibration in there. Uh, which could be like anything, man. That could be hitting a branch. That could be the arm bolts starting to loosen up a little bit. Um, it could be like a wire resting against the flight controller and starting to vibrate. Like any number of things um, will blow that setup up until you, you get it motor scaled down. Drone Pilot says, trouble is 9mm hole center. Uh, sorry, last statement. Uh, that's my issue getting wider stator motors. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, it's very annoying, Drone Pilot. The, the, the 9x9 motor mounting situation is not great. Uh, you know what I would also look at is the RCX 1306s. Um, they are a 9x9 motor mount. You can get them in 4,000 kV or 6,000 kV. Uh, you got to go to MyRC Mart to, uh, to get those. If you pay 25 bucks in shipping on MyRC Mart, it'll be like two day or even overnight. If you pay 10 bucks in shipping, it'll take like two months. Um, so yeah, there you go. Bad Conquer says, uh... Uh, his idea is to simulate in sub 250, then disc load from 5 inch, and his final result, 4 inch sub 250 makes more sense on 4 inch than 5 inch. Okay, so it's a 4 inch, it's not a 3 inch. Um, I've talked a good amount about 4 inch on here. Um, basically, right now, 4 inch is, is kind of the flavor of the week because the the four inch long range rigs made a lot of sense um four inch freestyle in my opinion doesn't really make any sense uh mainly because there's not a camera there's not a payload in the the weight range that four inch propellers are going to do a good job carrying so what i mean is uh three inch rigs are three inch propellers are the right size to carry a payload of like zero to 20, maybe even like 25 grams. Uh, five inch rigs are perfect for carrying payloads from like the 80 gram to 120, 130 gram, right? Session five to, uh, to hero. So then there's this, there's this gap in between, right? From like 25 or 30, let's just say 30 grams all the way up to 80 grams. And so that's where four inch fits, but we don't have any cameras in that in that weight range, right? So basically what's gonna happen is a four inch rig is gonna either carry a payload that's too heavy with a GoPro, or it's gonna carry a payload that's too light with like an Insta360 Go or a naked GoPro. Um, so when it's carrying a payload that's too light, it's gonna have too much float. And that was my experience with it and why I moved away from it. Um, versus if it's carrying a GoPro, it's going to not have enough prop size and it's going to tumble out of the sky like a sack of hammers. So four inch is, yeah, I mean, a lot of people are, are, are able to sell a lot of four inch stuff right now, but I think what we're going to see is like six months from now, no, it's like all of those four inch rigs are just going to be wall, wall art basically. Um, because they, they just don't, yeah, they, they just don't really, or maybe we'll get a 50 gram camera that's really good. And then four inch rigs will just continue to explode more and more and more. Um, but at the moment there's just not a really good home for, 
for four inch rigs. Drone Goats uh, says Insta360 Go 2 is coming out next week with incredible specs. It certainly is. Um, it's 26 grams, which is perfect for three inch rigs. Uh, an Insta360 Go 2 on a four inch rig is just going to float like a toothpick. Um, and that's just not, I, I, that's just not my deal. That, that's not my thing. Again, I, I try to get all of my micro rigs to as closely simulate the flight experience with five inch as, as I possibly can. Um, from a piloting standpoint, so that I have some chance of not destroying my muscle memory every single time I fly each one of these different rigs. Um, but also just because five inch has had the biggest, longest, most robust development cycle and the five inch ratio of, of prop size to all up weight and float and all that good stuff. Um, it, yeah, it just, it just works really, 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 really well. Uh, <clears throat> where are we at here? Uh, oh, Akash posted again, said, uh, five inch quad 5045 tries. Uh, Emacs RS 2205, 2300 KV motors. So I'm already starting to see some potential issues. Uh, Akash, if you can quickly tell me what those 5045s are, uh, if those are HQ 5045s, there's your problem. Those propellers are not well balanced and those motors are not big enough for that heavy of a propeller. Um, and then he says, Oh, well, no, there's your problem. A hard-mounted SP F3 flight controller. That's the problem there, too. You can't have a, a hard-mounted flight controller. It just doesn't work. you got to get that flight controller soft-mounted. Um, BL Heli SESCs, that's fine. Uh, Martian, uh, Martian frame, that's fine, too. Uh, when I punched the throttle, it did well on stock, but now it oscillates like hell. So what more than likely happened is that when it was when everything was absolutely fresh and there was like none of the motor bells were bent none of the bearings were worked in none of the propellers were bent um so like when that thing was totally clean and there was a minimal amount of vibrations um you were okay because the hard but but as soon as any of the components of that build started to get worked in that's when vibrations start to happen and there's like the, the solution is not to like chase those vibrations because then you'll you'll wind up with like a kiss build or a flight one build where you you constantly have to change props you constantly have to change motors you constantly have to chase every single screw and nut to make sure everything is always perfectly tight um, and that's just silly it's it's just silly to do that there, there's there's no reason to do that. The, the better setup is to build some headroom into it by having a soft-mounted flight controller and by having um, flight software like Betaflight with really good uh, filtering, RPM filtering, that can handle those vibrations so that when you bang up a propeller, you're good to go. You bang up a motor, your ba the bearings start to get worked in, the arms start to delaminate, the screws start to back out. Um, you can still keep flying. Um, that's what I really work hard to, to get you guys into a situation where you can go out and fly a bunch without having to screw around with the, the, your rigs going crazy and oscillating all over the place or just generally flying like shit. Um, and that's one of the biggest reasons that I'm such a proponent for Betaflight because Betaflight allows you to do that better than all the other flight softwares combined, although Emu Flight is about to get really close, if not just as good. Um, so yeah, um, Akash, the uh, the the absolutely the biggest part of that issue is that hard mounted flight control you just can't do it it just doesn't work um uh so yeah get that get that flight controller soft mounted and most of your problems will go away also get rid of those 5045 tries i see that you said they're hq uh get rid of those props move over to gemfan 5143.3s or gemfan 5146s uh those are going to be better balanced and a lot lighter uh, and a much, much, much better match for those 2205s. Uh, Drone Pilot says, thank you. You're certainly welcome. Richard says, in the filters tab, should the gyro filter multiplier and D-term filter multiplier be moved together? Uh, currently, I have a lot less filtering on gyro than D-term. Really good question, Richard. Um, <laughs> so if your rig is somewhat clean, believe it or not, 
you can turn off the gyro filtering nowadays. The, as long as you're running RPM filtering, I should say. Um, RPM filtering is so good, and the gyro filtering slider does so little <laughs> that, yeah, you can actually shut it off completely, which is, which is to say, like, you know, the, the, like, moving them, moving them at the same, at the same rate is all the way over here, and then shutting one completely off is right all the way over here, right? So, um, the answer, the, the main, the simple answer to your question is no, they don't need to be moved at the, at the, with each other. All that being said, it's much safer to move them with each other. The, the, the gyro filter and the gyro filtering, um, doesn't create much delay and it's just like kind of an extra safety feature. Um, I have rigs that have the gyro filtering off. I have rigs that have it on at the same number as the D-term filtering. And I don't see a difference. So it's kind of about you. If you want a little bit more safety, move those things together. Uh, if you want to chase the dragon and, and try to get your, your, um, your filtering latency down as low as possible, which will help prop wash maybe a tiny little bit, um, then you can, you can really ram that, um, well, no, for you guys, it would be this way. You can really push that gyro filtering all the way up to 2.0 or sometimes even turn it all the way off. Um, but the safest thing to do is to move those guys together. Um, and I'm a big fan of having a rig that's safe because I like to drive home with the same number of rigs that I drove to the spot with. Tiago says, Shark Bite has new OSD elements on the goggles. Awesome. No pressure, uh, no pressure to some lunatic streamer. I know how to mount the damn thing and review it. Um, that's pretty much the push that it, well, I need motors. Um, Shark Bite is going to go in this other uh, Cinesplore here, but I need motors. Um, I've been patiently waiting for Tommy to get his 3500 KV 2004s in, but Chinese New Year, I know, backed everything up for him, and I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the problem is none of the 2004s out there are high enough KV for 4S. Um, what, KV are, what KV are Bob's 2204s? Does he make those in a... In a high enough KV? Uh, where the hell are they? Here they are. Does he make them in like a... Yeah, he does. 3450. Um, oh, that's right. And you can even get them in T-mount now. Interesting. Um, I should never have sold these. I had a set of his old school 2203s. These are now 2204s um, that I sold to Glenn, a really cool local pilot. Um, I should have held on to them. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll figure it out. Uh, but yeah, that's going to go on there. I'm, I'm excited to do it. Uh, let's. Uh, so there's a. Um, my interview with. Michael Rollins from Tuesday, Tuesday night we spoke. Uh, I don't know when the interview is gonna be up, but let's take a look. All right, it's not up yet. If you wanna make sure that you don't miss it, here's a link to his channel. Um, if you were turned off by his old interviewing style of like asking the, the really kind of in your face questions to create a lot of drama, um, it's cool. He stopped doing that. He's not being that guy anymore. Um, his new topics are all like good, cool, non-dramatic um, things, and yeah, he's a great interviewer. So um, if you maybe like I did, subscribe to him back then and got kind of sick of the drama and unsubscribed. Now might be a good time to resubscribe to him, especially if you want to see the interview uh, that he did with me, where we talked a lot and, and covered a ton of really good um, mental health stuff. So go check him out. Super cool dude. Uh, we spoke for like almost two hours after the interview. Um, really, really nice guy. Uh, 
Really good question, by the way, Richard, if I didn't say that. Huckleberry says, uh, it's not all about HD footage for me. Uh, it's how the bird flies. I fly for enjoyment, not the HD footage. I got 5-inch and 6-inch for that. Uh, what were we talking about, Huckleberry? Um, what were we talking about? Were we talking about 3-inch versus 4-inch? Um, so if... Hold on. No, let me... Let me make sure that I don't launch into a... What were we talking about? I guess we weren't talking... I don't see Huck I don't see any comments from Huckleberry. Uh... All right, so I guess, I guess, Huckleberry, you're just saying this, like, in general. Um, it's not all about the HD footage for me. It's how the bird flies. I fly for enjoyment, not the HD footage. I got 5-inch and 6-inch for that. Um, so I don't see a question. There's no question in there, which, which makes me feel like um, I'm missing something. He could be. He totally could be. Kristen said he's just stating. Uh... But I know that we were just... No. Okay. We're good. Um, yeah, dude, that's totally valid, Huckleberry. I, I use the HD footage to do a lot of my tuning um, uh, and, and some other stuff. But no, you know, my, my way of doing things is not the right answer. It's just the way that I do things. Um, if uh, if <laughs> I'm, I'm actually pretty jealous of people who just fly for enjoyment... Um, because it's, it's very freeing in, in that respect. And it's, and it's just pretty kind of magical. Um, quite often I find myself like, you know, being insane about <laughs> getting good footage and, and getting clean footage and all this stuff. And it's like, man, I miss the days of, of flying without HD, um, and just flying, you know, little three inch rigs that in, in the parking lot of, uh, of, uh, Kristen and my apartment in, in Charleston. It was very pure back then. Um, not that it's not fun anymore. It's just different. There's, there's more pressure when I go out and fly, um, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, it's, yeah, when, when you do something for a long time, that tends to happen. Um, Bad Conquer says, get it, but which 3-inch frame that can be flown sub-250 would you prefer? Uh, the one that we're going to continue the build on here tonight is my current favorite, the BQE Rip Squeak Micro. Uh, Private Island says, hey, before I change anything, I'm going to flash Emu and see if that fixes it. Uh, haha, good idea. Um, I can save you some time, Private Island. It's, it's not gonna. Um, I've been down that road. Um, just think of it this way. Emu flight is beta flight with a couple things sprinkled on top. Um, so if it ain't working in beta flight, it's, it's just not going to work in, in Emu flight. And it's probably actually going to be worse in Emu flight because their default PIDs are higher than beta flight. Um, so yeah, it's probably going to be worse. Uh, but if you want to go down that road, let us know how it goes. Um, I've had no luck with it. Uh, but a lot of people love it for angle mode. It does some really interesting things with angle mode. Um, and a lot of other people like it because they're they're unwilling to tune and like i said it has higher pid gains from the factory so it flies better from like straight out of the box because of that um in your case that's not what you want um because you're having the, the, these issue with vibes so it's it's probably going to be worse for you so just be careful i don't want you to blow that rig up Sick of Life says, your, your channel needs a warning. We'll turn you into a gem fan fanboy after two streams. <laughs> yeah, I, man, I've... Um, their, their props are just really good, man. They're just really, really good. Um, I've been a fan of theirs from the jump. Uh, their micro props have always been better balanced than, uh, than anybody else's. And uh, Mark Spatz actually a couple years ago did some really interesting testing of propellers in terms of how well balanced they were, and it backed that up. It, it backed up uh, on on five inch rigs. So even even the five inch gem fan propellers are better balanced than than anybody else. Um, when if you if you dig up that video of his, I think it's a couple videos actually. Um, the best performing propellers were the T motor fifty one forty threes. Those are made by gem fan. So. They're, they're basically just the Gemfan 5143.3s uh, with a little bit of a different uh, blade profile. 
Um, Akash says, I was trying to increase iTerm and thought maybe that would work. Thanks a ton, Ciotti. Um, yeah, I, I turn, I term does not really work. Isn't, isn't going to help with that. Um, here's the long and short of I term. The factory setting is like l good to go. Uh, tuning I term makes the least difference out of anything else. So like if you can, if you can eliminate placebo and confirmation bias, you can change your I term by like 20 or 30 points and there will be almost no difference. Like, not a perceptible difference that you can tell. The problem is, our brains are mired in placebo and confirmation bias. So when we change the eye term, we then go back up in the air and we go, Oh yeah, that definitely made it better. It probably did nothing. Um, but the long and short of it is that the, the factory eye term settings are good for like 99.9% .9 of rigs. Uh, it's all about P and D gain. Uh, but in your case, it's all about getting some soft mounting on that flight controller. That's going to fix most of your problems. Um, let me know if you need any more help. Private Island says, oh, we got that. Uh, Blandon Ray in the house, he says, uh, you planning on running Insta360 Go on that rip squeak? Absolutely. I converted mine into a two and a half inch sort of Cinewoop. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, I've got the, uh, I've got the regular Insta360 Go mounts, uh, a whole bunch of them actually, for, for both this rip squeak, um, and this one that, uh, that we built, I guess what, like last month we got this one together. Um, and yeah, Insta360 Go up here, they, they both, they're both going to have, uh, run cam hybrids on board. But, you know, just putting the little piece of TPU up here is like a one gram weight penalty. And you can take this part off. Um, so, yeah, hybrid on board uh, for, like, total bashing. And then Insta360 for more Cinewoop-ish stuff uh, to utilize the Horizon Lock and stuff like that. Um, I really, 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 really hope that um, the new Insta360 Go body is the same size. Uh, the lens on the Insta360 GO 2 uh, is definitely longer, but I really hope that the body itself here... Don't tell us, Shurian. Uh, ...is the same size so that I don't have to get all new mounts, because I have a whole bunch of Insta360 GO mounts at this point. Um, and this... this regular... <clears throat> What do we call this? The Insta360 Go 1 now, I guess? Okay, so the 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 Insta360 Go 1, I'm only going to be using on the 65mm rig. Um, so I'm going to be really pissed if all my mounts, if, if all these, uh, yeah, mounts are, you guys know what I'm saying. Oh god, what's happening? Richard says, I've been having issues trying to set up RPM filtering on my Mamba 20 by... Motherfucker, YouTube, come on, man. <clears throat> Hold on. There we go. Richard says, I've been having issues trying to set up RPM filtering on my Mamba 20x20 ESCs. Uh, so I've been running no RPM filtering. My motor temp is pretty cool with my current tune. Uh, are all ESCs capable of setting up RPM filtering? Um, pretty much. I mean, there's. I only know of one... Well, no, that's not true. Um, there are ESCs that are so cheaply made uh, that the processors in the ESC are not fast enough to handle RPM filtering. Um, you can typically get around that by going down to D-Shot 300 and um, uh, 4K on the, on the loop times. Uh, but... Yeah, sometimes the there I have had the the Speedix IS25 uh, seems to have a really hard time, and then some of the uh, the ESCs built into the Tiny Whoop boards uh, can have a really rough time. It's pretty rare. Um, what what are the what are the what like what's going on, Richard? Maybe I can help you out. Although I mean, there, there's really like you flash the newest version of BL Heli, and that's kind of it. <laughs> Like, there, there's not a whole lot. Um, 
and then hopefully you've got like an F4 or an F7 uh, flight controller so that you know that the issue is not on the flight controller side. Um, oh my god, this is killing me. Tiago says, have you ever tested the difference in weight between the T-mount and the shaft mount? Yeah, Tiago, we did that. Um, uh, the, the, we did that on the after party for FPV crate unboxing. Um, and uh, so, yeah, the, on, on Patreon, uh, you can find the link to that. It was a... It's like 0.3 grams. It was an insignificant amount, which really pissed me off. Um, it was like 0.3 or 0.2 grams. Um, like the, the, the total... So like the motor bell is different. Okay, so M5, it, it was on 1507s. Um, so it was like 1507 M5 bell with the aluminum M5 nut with the the uh, gem fan five blade propeller without the little insert in it right versus 1507 T mount with the two M two by seven screws that you need and the gem fan insert right to convert that five blade prop to use T mount and all together it was like 0.2 or 0.3 grams of a difference uh, yeah I mean that is a difference and and rotating weight of like fractions of a gram sort of yeah they build up but it was like yeah i don't know i i was really hoping it would be more to be honest um t-mount uh, yeah i don't know the what i like about t-mount is that it's a shorter lever for when you crash inverted and that's the reason why i why i stick with t-mount um, but I hate dealing with the little screws and I, and like when I'm, when I'm out in a parking lot flying, I fucking drop one of the screws on the ground and it's gone forever. Um, but it's a shorter lever, so it's going to crash better a hundred percent of the time. Dauntless says, uh, didn't he want to interview you first about the rival, uh, with that other channel that, uh, invented a challenge, uh, to get a certain amount of subs though. Sort of, but not really Dauntless. Like, it, it wasn't going to be... Not from, like, a standpoint of, like, hey, let's create drama. From a standpoint of, like, let's talk about what you guys are up to from a business... The, Michael's new approach is, like, a lot of stuff about, like, the business of FPV. Like, that's what he really wants to talk to people about. Um, and I basically said to him that I have no real interest in that. Like, I very specifically don't spend my time thinking about or planning or working with that so that I have more time to just focus on making good stuff and and that you guys have allowed me to do that by like in the chat being like yo Siata you should set up a Patreon I want to join it and then I go oh okay I'll do that and then a month later you guys go yo you should set up an Etsy store and sell stickers or you know so like and 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 then I, the other the other part of it was that like I knew that he had some mental illness stuff going on, and I said, look, I think the the like the most bang for the buck that we can get out of this interview to just like make the world a better place and help people is if me and you talk mental illness illness because yeah the, the, it's it's very different two people that suffer from it talking versus one person that suffers from it and one person that doesn't it is a completely different conversation um so yeah my approach was like hey let's talk about things that are going to help the world most um so sorry if that's if, if any of you guys would rather have heard about the business side of fpv but i really don't have one um f like on purpose like very 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 much on purpose um there's something called the uh the planning fallacy uh, which it, it's funny, like I, I wasn't aware of the planning fallacy, but it kind of explains my approach in a way. Um, the pa planning fallacy basically states that like, so you tend to like, all right, I'm going to do something new. I'm going to make a plan and then I'm going to do this new thing, right? So you spend like a week making a plan, how how this new thing that you're going to do is going to go and, and you're going to set yourself goals and, and all these things, right? 
that moment that you're making the plan without even having started that new thing is the worst possible time for you to make any plans because you don't know shit. You know nothing. You haven't even done it yet. You might do it and decide you hate it after one week and then you wasted that entire week planning, right? And where the planning fallacy becomes really annoying is like today, if I decide, okay, I'm gonna plan out the rest of this year with FPV and my channel and, and all this shit. Now is still the worst possible time to do that. Yes, I do have the last year's worth of experience, but I have no idea what's gonna happen tomorrow. I could get cancer tomorrow, right? But be diagnosed with cancer tomorrow, rather. Uh, FPV could get outlawed in a week, right? So like, I'm, I'm, what I'm not saying is don't plan, right? Like planning has value and, and whatnot, but um, I find it, I don't know. I, I just, I, I, my preference is to not set like concrete goals, not set like all of these plans and, and like put all this pressure on myself. I also kind of have to do this because of the depression and the anxiety and the way that they affect me and, and the way that they twist my brain um, into, yeah. So um, there's that. That was a hell of a rant. Um, <laughs> back to FPV. Mark A says, when's the interview with Michael come out? I have no idea, Mark. Soon, soon. Uh, Huckleberry FPV with a $5 super chat. He says, you hit it with your explanation. Much love, brother. Awesome. Sounds good, Huckleberry. Thank you so much, dude. I'm going to go to the gear fund, and I'm going to go to 473. Look at that. Completely odd number. Doesn't that bother someone out there? Leadfinger says, on a new 5-inch build, would you recommend just upping the PIDs a little in Betaflight? Uh, how much? Uh, first race of the season is this weekend, and I'm still on stock PIDs. Um... On a fresh build, here's the here's the long and short of it from from my point of view. If it's if it's a fresh build, but it's a build that you know, okay. So my glides, right? I've got I've built many 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 glides, um, so I know the frame. I know that I know the motors that I'm gonna build, right? I know the flight control. I know the ESC, like. There, I've built them before. You know what I'm saying? So like, when I build a brand new glide, I go bananas on the PIDs right out of the box. I, I just, I tune it exactly the way the rest of these are. Um, because there are a whole bunch of known quantities. All of that being said, it's still risky. If the gyro in the flight controller, in the fresh flight, flight controller that I put in is bad, even a little bit bad, I could arm it and cook it just like that. So, but I take the chance because I'm dumb <laughs> and it hasn't bitten me before, right? Um, but there's a lot of risk in doing that. Uh, there's not a lot of risk in bumping like your P gains up by five and maybe your D gains up by five or 10. But at the same time, you're still dancing with the devil on that. So. Um, one thing I'll do is like, just, you know, take shelter behind the couch and arm it while it's in the office here and then even hover it while it's in the office and just listen for any weirdness. And if I don't hear any weirdness, that's a really good sign that I can push five or 10 into P and D gains. Um, but it's tough. If... It's a frame that you haven't built before, motors that you haven't used before, a flight controller that you haven't used before. It's not worth it. Um, it's it, You're not going to be any slower from having a more sloppy PID tune. I mean, if anything, it's just going to be more practice for you. You're going to have to fly around the, the nonsense, um, and it's going to make you a better pilot, and then you can crank the PIDs up. Um, so that's that's my approach to uh, to messing with, with the error correction prior to maidening a rig. Uh, Dauntless tagged me and said, uh, I would think injection molding plastic molds would make props pretty balanced, uh, but other brands have proved me wrong. Yeah, it's true. It's, um, it's kind of crazy. Well, no, it's not. It's not crazy. Because like when they pour the urethane 
Um, it's easy for there to be like little air bubbles here and there. there there's a lot that can happen with, with pouring molds uh, to make it not perfectly uh, um, balanced. And like look at the, the, the wing community, right? Like the, the RC airplane community they don't fly props that they haven't balanced, like, ever. Like, they always balance their propellers. So, I mean, it's it's a pretty standard kind of thing. Um, man, my nose itches just like a son of a bitch. Bad Conquer says, thanks for the chat, and I wish you guys a good night. Be good, bad, good to have you, good to see you in here. Um, Dauntless says, what's the point of BL Heli 32 these days? <laughs> I don't know, man. BL Heli S... I mean, I confirmed with Betaflight devs like six months ago that there's zero performance difference in black box between BLLES and BLA32. So, like, um, but at some point, in theory, there'll be another update in BLHeli that'll maybe use some of the uh, the extra processing power in the BLHeli32 ASCs. Uh, Richard says, my ESC is 600 only. Really? I didn't think that was possible. Um, does it not work when you go down to 300? I've never seen an ESC. So, like, the way that ESCs work is they'll say, like, BL Hell Yes. Well, no, they'll, they'll say, like, uh, compatible with D-Shot 150 and D-Shot 300. And then sometimes they'll say D-Shot 600. And then sometimes they'll say D-Shot 1200. Like, it's a, it, like, ramps up. Um... I've never seen one that starts at D-Shot 600. Um, I didn't think that was really possible. But, I mean, God knows. Maybe Mamba figured out a way to make it cheaper um, by taking out support for D-Shot 300 or D-Shot 150. But I, I, I kind of doubt that. If, if you're judging by, like, what a website says, look up that ESC on different websites um, because I have a feeling that the website that you're looking at, they just didn't mention D-Shot 150 and D-Shot 300 because nobody cares about them anymore, right? And they just wanted to save space for the, for the, uh, the description and or get a little bit more SEO juice. Um, so do that. Stuck in Trees says, you talk about whatever you want, it's your channel. It's true. It is true. Tiago says, Zen Buddhism, if you keep your mind focused on the desti destination, you will enjoy it. You will never enjoy the path. Focus on the now. Damn right. Yeah, it's funny. I've had this approach for way longer than... I, I, I've had this approach from, again, like, f just from the fact that I, I've just adjusted everything so that I can do this, so that I can wrap my head around this and not completely go off the reservation. Um, it's, it, it's kind of funny that I ended up, and, and, and I, I was doing this back when I thought that yoga and meditation were very woo-woo, and I, that I would never do them for a day ever, ever, ever in my life. Much less yoga, because I'd, I'd done, um, yoga before, and I really liked the way that it made my body feel, but meditation, like, no way in hell. Like, prior to December of 2020, like, there was just no chance in hell that I would ever meditate. It, it just seemed like the silliest thing ever, and I'd tried it before, I had a stress management class in college, um, and it didn't work, um, uh, but, uh, yeah, it's funny to kind of, now, uh, now that I've, I've, I've seen the, the effect that those two things can really have on me, um, it's just funny, it's just funny, Z is in the house, uh, he says, it is all about the quality of the machining in the molds, um, that makes sense. That makes sense. And molds do wear. Um, that was a big problem that HQ had with their 5x4.3 V1Ss. Uh, the molds got so old that, like, the early uh, 4.3 V1Ss were balanced, but then, like, the, the, the fresher of a 4.3 V1S that you got, the worst balanced it was. To the point where, like those, like those propellers were awful towards the end. I guess you could, they probably still make them, um, but yeah, you, if you ever want to run a, an HQ five by four point three by three V one S, I mean, there's really no way to know. 
but you want to make sure that it's not one that's been manufactured within like the last year because they've been really awful. Although nobody's flying those propellers anymore, so uh, and I don't recommend that you do. Everything everything that we've got now is way 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 better. Um, uh, Grant R says I'm just picturing you hiding behind your coach to couch tuning. Uh, your wife must be super awesome. It only happens for like a second, Grant. It's basically like like it's basically I'll, I'll turn this camera on. And then I, I point the camera at the floor so that you guys can see. And then, um, because like five inch rigs inside the house is a horrible idea. But I rent, so like I don't really care if it rockets into the ceiling and leaves a dent in the ceiling. So I just take my transmitter and I just, and this is like, for the record, if, if you're going to maiden, if, if you're going to test hover a five inch rig inside your house, you should be doing this too. Because like, if that fucker rockets at your face full throttle, like... You'll be thanking me when, when it hits the couch instead of your, your eyeballs. Um, I just come out here, and I just... Uh, you guys can't see because the lights are off. But the, the, the side of our couch is, like, right there. And I just I just hunker down behind the side of the couch, and I leave the transmitter up on the top. And then I just arm it, and then disarm it, and then I'll just bring it up, and then I'll... Yeah. Don't sleep on 5-inch rigs, man. They'll cut your fucking face off. Like, legitimately cut your actual face off. Um, Leadfinger says, I was lying a bit. <laughs> I've flown my race big a fair amount, uh, but it's uh, still in very good condition. Uh, going to pump the P&D up 5 or 10 for the practice flights and see how it goes. Thanks, brother. And, you know, Leadfingers, you can always just turn them right back down in the OSD. So you're, you're good if it's, if it's too much. Um, but, yeah, I would... Uh, yeah, if you can turn them up and then do a practice flight, you'll be totally fine. Uh, Richard says, it's the Mamba F35HV ESC. The protocol tab only shows D-Shot 600. Uh, it was a pretty cheap stack. Wow. That is unbelievable. That, I mean, if it, if it doesn't give you the option to go to D-Shot 300, you can't. I didn't even think about that. Um, yeah, if, if D-Shot 300 is not there in the configuration tab... Like, that's it. Game over. Look at this. They specifically call it out here. What the hell, Diatone? Really? Wow. Wow. That is unreal. I mean, it, it actually kind of makes sense until it doesn't work with RPM filtering, and then it doesn't make sense, and then it's a really big fuck you, basically. RPM filtering. Have you done this yet? Um, yeah, dump that into, uh, dump that into Google. See if anybody else is having, uh, is having the same issue. Unfortunately, forums are, are not really used all that much anymore. If, 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 if we were still using forums, this, this Google search here would find the answer, I can almost guarantee you. Um, but now we're using Facebook groups, which are not indexed for, for Google to be able to crawl. Uh, and we're using YouTube videos, which don't have any text in them. Um, Google is getting better at, at voice to text within YouTube videos, so... Um, but it's not, it's not there quite yet. Uh, man, that's crazy, Richard. Um, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, for the most part, like RPM filtering either works or it doesn't. So if it doesn't, like, don't use it and then beat the, what I would do is I would just not use RPM filtering and just bash the shit out of that rig. <laughs> Put like big nasty motors on it, big pitchy props, and try to blow that ESC up to give you an excuse to switch it out. Uh, mainly because like if I was to just if I if I was in your situation right and I had that ESC, I would be like, all right, all right, let me take this ESC out. Well, it still works, so let me put it over here. And then like every time I would look over there, I would see that ESC, and I'd be like, well, I could probably build something around it with like spare parts. It would just always be right like whereas. I've learned that, like, if I break that ESC, not just by hitting it with a hammer, right? Like, that doesn't count. Um, then it's like, oh, it's broken. Get it the fuck out of my life. And into the garbage can it goes. 
Z says the worst part for props is when a new size gets extra hype, but the investment in the mold is usually pretty low. Yeah. Uh, so lower quality slash cheap mold uh, to be shit balance. Uh, Richard says laugh my ass off. Hey, I'm caught up on the chat. We can do some work. Uh, we're, whoa, hour 24. Jeez, okay. Um, I am hungry. I am hungry. What time is it? Eight o'clock? Oh shit, what's, uh, is bot on at eight or nine? I don't want to overlap. I'm looking it up now. Uh, where you at, bot? Uh, nine o'clock. Okay, cool. We got a little bit more time. Uh, I'm gonna do about another half half hour. I don't know if we're gonna finish this thing up. Damn. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. This stream will just be a big lie. I left the soldering iron overnight last night. That was great. Really thrilled about that. That's only the seven thousandth time I've done that. Um, so yeah, the big issue here with this rig is that these motor wires are too short. That's going to take the most time, but, uh, we might as well get everything else. Ma you know what? Maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe I'll get everything else all locked in and mounted and good to go here. And then we'll just say that the rig is done. <laughs> and then I will, uh, I will, um, oh, here's all the red. Here's all the red stuff. And then I'll uh, I'll do the motor wires outside of the stream because it's, it, it's, they're motor wires. I mean, it's soldering 12, no, 24 connections. It's really like the least interesting thing that I could possibly do. So, okay, cool. This is the, the little top mount piece thing for the uh, Insta360 Go. Get this going here. And I don't know what I'm going to do about a uh, an antenna mount yet for this. Let me pull this one. And we'll see what's going on with it. Yo, my nose is more itchy than it's ever been. From all that coca jaina, I'm told. Put it on the outside of my nose. Uh, Jason Crabtree says, "Where's the hybrid board? It is all the way on the bottom." Uh, I've, I haven't really decided. I, I've, I've been putting the, the hybrid board in different locations on each build to kind of see if I can figure out whether or not I like it in one spot over the other, and I don't. I don't know. It, it's just in a different spot. It's it's kind of whatever. It's like when I put it in one spot, I'll be like, oh, I like this, this, and this about it when it's on top. And then I'll put it on the bottom, and I'm like, well, I like this, that, and that about it being on the bottom. I haven't really had a... I haven't really... I haven't put it in the middle yet. I probably won't. But, like, you know what I mean? I, I haven't come to the decision of, like, oh, it's best on the top or, oh, it's best on the bottom. Um, but I'll get there. I don't think, I don't think I want to use this. This is for a, um, this build has this old ass Isheen VTX 03 S, which is a completely fine VTX, but it's just a little bit bigger. Um, and I like to mount it vertically like this between the rear standoffs and that's not really a great usage of this piece of TPU here. So I'm going to put this away. And I'm going to grab the other antenna mount TPU. I think I missed something in the chat, so give me a second. Let me... Uh... Oh, my God. Come on. Uh... Oh god, ouch, fuck you. Uh, ouch. Son of a bitch. Alright. I like when the TPU is 
not too loose, but man, sometimes it's it's a it's an awful lot. God damn it! Come on, man. I also try not to ruin these standoffs by. Oh man, that's really. This one's like really got printed kind of tight. I also don't have a great tool to, to push these damn things out. What I really need is, I wonder if this guy will do it. That guy too big? Yeah. No, it's good. Ooh, 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 this is the tool. Fantastic. Ow! It's gonna leave a mark. Get a better way of doing that. Uh, okay, so this, this will be for the uh, HDLRC build. Uh, what was I looking for? An antenna mount? Let me just use this one. This one's going to be totally fine. Uh, and then maybe I'll even use, yeah, I'll use the forever tubes in this one. All right, so that's what we're going to do today. Uh, we're just going to get the, um, the little rear communications package all mounted up nicely. Ow, god damn, that hurt like hell. Uh, Tiago says D shot 150, 300, 600, 1200. Uh, it is all the same protocol, and the only change is the timing. Some slow MCUs can handle high speeds. Um, high speeds can always listen to lower speeds. Interesting. That's kind of what I thought. Tiago, but that's that's crazy that they specifically call it a D-Shot 600 board, and it's even crazier that um, that it doesn't give the options in the config tab. That's nuts. I, 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 that's, I don't know. What do I know? Uh, what's that? I heard you yawning. You want a bite? It's all by all the bread and the spices. And oh, I feel. Mm. You making a snack? Yeah, for my call, Jen. Cool. All right. I do sprite. She's jinxing in the dark. Yeah. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. Like we don't have anything else for the gin. I realize we ran out of the margarita. Oh. Now I have this whole thing of gin with nothing to mix it with. God damn, dude. Hurt my fucking finger. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I leave this little shelf in here, I guess I can't. I gotta cut the little shelf off. That's annoying. But it's gonna save us a little bit of weight. So let me cut this little shelf off here. This uh, this VTX is a little bit too tall for the shelf. And um, yeah, it's no good. So let's do this first. Actually, since the soldering iron is on, let me remove the motors because I have to desolder these points anyway. Um, and that will, uh, I'll just have less, it'll just be easier to work on this damn thing basically without the, uh, without the motors on it. So let's just bang that out real quick here. All right. Oh, shit sticks. Come on, really? You're gonna be a dick? All right, now we're gonna be fine. I hate how quick it is to pull these things apart. It really pisses me off. I really wish it took longer to tear these things down. Just feel a lot better, you know? A sick joke. <laughs> All right, there we go. And... I mean, I could bolt them down to the ends of the arms, but no real reason to do that quite yet. This is a Speedix GS25. 
ESC. It is 4S only, uh, but it is BL Holly 32, and most importantly, it is durable. The the location of the um, of the battery leads is absolutely absurd. They put them in the middle of the board, um, but it's actually not that bad. Like it's just kind of annoying. bridge situation going on here and we're all set nothing really much to see right now just kind of zapping these wires off yoinking these wires off you know what I mean yeah I don't know at, at first I, I really actually liked the location of the battery leads because it allowed me to uh, uh, keep the the uh, the battery leads away from the video line but that was on like one very specific build. Um, every build since then, it hasn't really made that any better. It hasn't made it any worse either, but um, yeah, it's not necessarily like, but it's a BLA 32 ESC that's durable and it's small and lightweight and that's pretty rare. So I have a bunch of them, but I don't think they're manufactured anymore, so. Although I do have it down in the video description uh, as an affiliate link. I might need to uh, remove it if it's out of stock at that link. I remember I had it linked in like a few different spots and then one by one they, they went out, they went on discontinue. They went on disco. And uh, I removed them one by one, but I think GetFPV was the last link that I had there. And I feel like I might have seen it discontinued over there. Or at least not in stock, which pretty much means Disco. Disco Stew doesn't advertise. Am I right, boys? I'm right. Okay, here we go. So I, I don't even need to remove it. I just need to uh, chop it. So if I cut it there, I kind of want to just go straight, no, it'll be fine. I'll go maximum choppage to get as much weight off of there as possible. Maximum choppage, boys and girls. Yeah. Maximum chop. There we go. All right. And if I need to melt that back on, I can. God forbid. Forbid God. Oh, sh hold on. Is this for the receiver? No, it's not. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> I think I had that same exact uh, realization last time. All right, I'm gonna put that in there. I'm gonna turn the solder guy off. Oh, what's up, Super Deluxe? How the hell are you? Your uh, super, your um, Acrobrat uh, is all packed up. It's gonna go in the uh, into the mail tomorrow. Sorry, it took so long, dude. Got a million things going on. Uh, okay, so this can go. This can go back on, and then I can uh, start mounting this stuff. And I might use the shrink wrap trick to uh, to hold it all in, or maybe I'll just do a um, maybe I'll just do a zip tie around the hole. The whole damn thing. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Um, so this little bundle of wires here. Okay, that's gonna be good. And then 
That guy can kind of hang out there. We finally do have enough clearance on the top. Maybe. Shit sticks. Hold on. Let's see here. There might actually not. It might actually not clear. No, we're good. Oh, look at that. Okay, cool. So... Give you guys a little bit of zoom here. Oops, nope. I want to go up. Okay. Okay. So, receiver uh, is unplugged. Let's get that plugged back in because we're ready to go now. Get this twisted up a little bit more just to uh, shorten the cable as much as we can. And here we go. That was exciting. Uh, I'm going to run this receiver plug down. And it's going to be zip tied to the back of the VTX. We should be okay. BTX does get a little hot, but um, the receivers don't really seem to care about the heat of the um, of the VTXs, so that's good. I'm trying to move these wires around into a location that makes the most sense. Okay, yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay, so it's going to be like that, and then this fella is going to come down here like this and yeah that guy goes in there and then we'll put some forever tubes in here and we'll be good to go before you know it all right so this guy is is kind of melted shut let's just chop that open there we go All right, cool, so now we should be able to get this UFL, direct UFL antenna into this nice little slot here. See if I can budget on in there, nah, not the right tool. Oh God. Okay, so the VTX is gonna sit flat and then this guy is gonna be roughly here. Just put the top of it like that. And here we go. Okay. Get in there, you jerk. Get in there. Come on. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Once it's in there, I should be able to slide it up and down, maybe. Sometimes it's kind of a pain in the ass. God damn it, come on, man. Mm. Oh, this makes much more sense. Do it right-handed, you right-handed person. There we go, there we go. That's getting there. Come on, get in there. Come on, man, get in there. God damn you! Is it not like open? What what the hell is going on here? Oh, it wasn't. <laughs> I couldn't see it, but the TPU was uh, melted together. That'll work an awful lot better. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Let me uh, let me just do this. Okay, that's gone forever. What up, Michael Scott? That finger says, I would love to see you do a bot grinder style uh, flight day vlog. Uh, a little chatting about the spot and whatever. Uh, f uh, a few one pack videos. I would like to see those videos with your vibe. Um, the problem with that, Lead Fingers, is that, like, 
the 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 two or three hours that I spend a day uh, live streaming, I would need to spend that and more editing, um, probably a lot more. So like, one of the problems that I have is like when when I do like a full edited video, I like it to be really really good, and typically that takes between ten and twenty hours of of editing for me, um, and like now that this is my career, it's just really hard to dedicate that much time to an edit that's going to get watched once and, and never watched again. Um, it's, it's kind of like the cruel, it's, yeah, it, it just, like, I've tried it, 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 and, like, it, it just doesn't, yeah, it's, it's just not my thing. And, and, like, I gotta kind of stick with my thing. Um... I, I, yeah, like, once a week somebody will say, like, hey, you need to do that, and, and like, I, I try to explain it, and I know I always come off like an asshole, so, like, I'm, I'm sorry if I am, but, um, yeah, like, this is, uh, this is just sort of my thing, like, that, like, that's Bot's thing, like, he's all set up to do that, and, like, he's good at doing it, and he's, he's become efficient at doing it, right, um, th and, and, like, this is my thing, um, and I also feel like, you know, people come here for this and, and people go there for that. Um, so it's, it's tough, man. Like uh, there, there's a million things that I want to do. Uh, but I, I just, I have to stick with, with like the things that I'm, I'm efficient and, and I'm good at. It's just kind of sort of part of the game. And yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it's tough. It's tough, but I'm uh, I'm doing my best. <laughs> Come on. Okay, so that's good, I think. Um Yeah, we're good to go here. Uh I do have edits coming though. I I, I do have finished polished flight edits that I work on a little bit at a time. Uh they're coming, but I, I just, yeah, I, I just, I gotta spend my time doing this kind of stuff, um, because this is what pays the bills. At some point, um, hopefully I can get to a place where, like, I have a little bit more freedom, uh, but for right now, I, I just, yeah, I gotta do the things that, that sort of pay the bills to keep the, uh, to keep the lights on. Because otherwise, I'm gonna have to go get a real job, and... I've been really trying to not do that. I've been really trying to just be patient and and just live live as as simply and as as uh cost effectively and and yada 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 as possible so that I can uh give this enough time to grow. But it's tough, man. It's it's really and and I, I don't know. I don't know if it's the right thing to do, but I just keep coming back to what Joshua said, which was, if not now, then when? Um, and yeah, that's that's why I, I kind of say like that I'm going to rock this until the wheels fall off. I mean, the, the wheels have... The wheels have kind of been fall off. <laughs> the wheels kind of fell off a long time ago. Um, it's... I, I guess I should be saying like, I'm going to rock this until the lights shut off. <laughs> but, um, you guys make it, it well, 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 well worth it, uh, which is pretty cool. Who needs a, co a goddamn car anyway, am I right? It's a good time to, uh, to not have a car, too, you know? With the pandemic and shit, it's like, well, I have to stay home. Damn, I won't get an aerosol pathogen that could potentially kill me. <laughs> uh, what's up, Rob? How are you, man? Uh, so now I need some forever tubes. And I also need to figure out which ones are going to fit in here. So this is the nice, flexible one. Let's see what the length is. Let's see what the length looks like. Oh my god, it's the perfect goddamn length. Look at me go. So, 
oh wow it does not fit in there tight though oh my god okay i'm not gonna use that one even if i load it up with um stuff i don't think it's gonna want to stay in there let's try this one this is the heavier one but it's probably the right size yeah it is see but even that's not all that firm in there. Okay, I'm going to try to use this really skinny one. Uh, let's see. And then I might as well grab some shorter ones from in here. Although they actually all look exactly the same. Uh, they're not the same though. This is the this is the more malleable one. So, what I'm going to do is put a layer of welder around this guy and then, I, and then I'm going to punch it in there and I'm just going to hope to hell that it uh, it holds. So let's do that here. Well there's really good stuff it should be okay. And you really only need to put it on the tip like this because you're then just going to push that tip down through there and it's going to naturally kind of spread it out but I don't know I kind of like to spread it out a little bit. Okay, so maybe that'll be all right. Maybe it won't, and it'll fall off and chop the antenna. But I hope not. I'm also gonna kind of like rotate it when I put it in there. I don't know, I feel like that kind of works, maybe. Helps. Probably not, but. And okay. A little bit hanging out there. Fine. I can pull the uh, I can pull the antenna lead in a little bit once I get this thing going here. Okay, so there's that little guy, and then uh, this top one. What's the shortest that I've got? Yo, my nose itches like a son of a bitch today. I wonder if uh, I scratch the cat and then scratch my nose. That's usually what causes it. Are any of these little fellas long enough? Maybe this one is. Oh my goodness, it's perfect. It's perfect. But I'll bet you it's too skinny. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, it is. All right, we're going to do the same thing here. A little bit. Just gonna pull it down a little bit, smush it around. And cool. That should be enough. <laughs> nice. Uh welder is actually a lot better than hot glue. Um it's it's much stickier. Much kind of tackier. I really like it. And you don't have to deal with a fucking hot glue gun. <laughs> which is the best part about it. Although I haven't used a hot glue gun in forever. I just use a lighter with hot glue sticks. It works really, really good. Um, but I really prefer welder over, over hot glue. In general. Getting this seated down as far as I can here. All right, there we go. So that should be good. Uh, now I just need to secure the uh, the VTX antenna in this nice little 45 degree jib jab, and I think I'm gonna do that with some of this. Um, with some of this three to one heat shrink, I think I can. I think this is the stuff that I can stretch out enough to uh, to get it up over the head of the. Although I'm not going to be able to get it over the head of the antenna with the the stuff on it, I don't think. But we'll give it a shot. So I'll just cut off a little piece here. You didn't know. You're about to know. 
Uh, shrink wrap can be stretched. You just have to kind of be careful. You can stretch it a good amount, but you can't stretch it infinitely or it will rip. So you can take it in your, in your little pliers like this, and you can actually stretch it out. And, and when you shrink it back up, it'll shrink down to the original size, which is pretty cool. So you just be real gentle, a little bit at a time. And now I'm gonna need to stretch it even more. These pliers, don't, um, these needle nose pliers don't kinda, don't open up quite big enough. One of the ways that I'll do that is just by pushing on it like this, kinda push on it back and forth. But it still won't fit over the head of this antenna. So here's what I do. I grab two little drivers, put one on either side like this, and then I get my fucking fingers all up in here and just give it a little pull. And this is where you'll usually rip it. So you gotta be really careful when you do this. And then you can just kind of rotate it around because you don't want to make like a weak spot. And give it a little pull again. And you gotta be fast because it kind of shrinks back up on its own. So get it out of there. Try to get it up over here. I didn't get it enough. Not quite enough. Let me see if these other needle you know, nose pliers open a little bit wider. I forget. I don't think they do. They do not. Yeah. All right, so let me do the little trick here again, and I'll pull a little bit harder and hope that I don't rip it. Come on, don't rip, buddy. Don't rip. You got this. Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it. All right, get it. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? No, where'd it go? Where'd you go? What? No, what? It's gone. What? What just happened? I think I heard something hit the ground. God damn it. Ah, I dropped the light. No, ah, I dropped the light again. Oh, there it is. God damn it. No, no. Oh, cool. It held its, uh, see that? Now it went over. Isn't that cool? And now watch. Watch how much this, watch how much this shrinks up now. It's going to shrink up like a son of a bitch. Oh, I shouldn't have put these forever tubes on here. Now I'm going to melt the forever tubes. God damn it. I'll just be really gentle with the heat. Look how much it already shrunk up. Isn't that nuts? Oh, wow. All right. Forever tubes are holding up totally fine. I usually have issues with them melting. Look at that. Can you believe how much that shrunk up, guys? Isn't that crazy? There I go, melting the forever tube. Awesome. Look how much the forever tubes aren't melting, guys, and man melts forever tube. Um, but yeah. Oh, shit. It came out of the TPU. Go back in the TPU, you jackass. You jackass! Okay, and then the other thing you want to do, uh, don't rely on just that. Uh, put a little zip tie action on the... Uh, on this little thing so that the TPU is like this and then the um, the TPU is like that and the wire goes in it and you just want to to really get it to grab you know what I mean uh, just give it a second to kind of chill out because the um, the uh, the TPU gets a little warm when you do this shit and uh, kind of malleable I'm actually gonna go double on this so, yeah, let's put this guy around. Uh, and this makes a big difference, man. This is a $20 antenna. Don't, uh, don't lose it. 
So this one I'm going to go up on the top. Uh, or lose the entire rig, right? When, when you lose an antenna, there's a good chance you're going to lose the entire rig because you're going to lose video if you're more than like 10 feet away. Um, so pay attention to your... Uh, not, not, yeah, pay attention and, and just take the time to get a good antenna mount set up. It uh, could save the entire rig. It's one of those things that like it's at the end of the build, you're like, fuck it, I'm just going to half-ass this. Don't. Don't do that. You won't like it. It's just not worth it. Like, it, it's just worth it to take the extra half hour to get this set up properly. Because, like, if you half-ass it, it it's just going to break anyway, right? Like, it's just going to end up failing in, in some other way. Even if you don't lose the whole rig, you're going to have to come back and do it again. So, do it right the first time, and, and uh, you'll have a better life. <laughs> All right, there we go. So that, my friends, is how you prevent your uh, antenna from getting ripped out. See it? Cool. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is just throw a, uh, a zip tie around these rear standoffs to pull this um, to pull this VTX forward and just kind of like hold it straight. So let's do that real quick here. And I'm going to use a big old zip tie just so that it's got some uh, some girth. And like a nice big contact patch of plastic. So let's do this here. The only thing you want to pay attention to is where you put the, uh, the little head. If you put the head out here, the propeller is going to try to hit it. Um, what you can sometimes do is put it down low, but then if you get like a, if you get a, um, a bent prop it can potentially hit it so what I'll do is just put it like right in the back dead center in the back and usually that'll be good to go but you just want to like make sure that you get this VTX sitting properly before you just go cranking down on the on the zip tie because when you crank down on a zip tie like it'll put enough force on this VTX to fucking break the PCB so just be careful. There we go. Now the VTX is sitting down where I want it. And the receiver is pushing into it, which is what I want as well. And let me just make sure that these receiver antennas are up in here. This one got kind of pulled out of there. All right, and then I'm actually going to pull this other receiver antenna out a little bit just so it's not sticking so far in there. There we go. And I think that should be pretty good. Uh, the worry and what you really want to pay attention to... Ah, you fuck. Uh, what you want to pay attention to is making sure, like, the VTX can't sneak out of here and like basically fall out the back of the damn thing. Uh, that's the main concern. So you just want to kind of move it around and get it situated. There we go. That's what I wanted. Okay. So that's all sitting nice in there now. Nice and solid. Nobody wants to move around. And I'm not going to go super tight. I think I'm going to leave that there. That's about as tight as I want to go. There 
And there you have it. Oh my God, Super Deluxe with a $10 Super Chat. My man, he says, FP Army, F FPV Army grows stronger and more powerful. Bro, thank you, dude. Very, very cool of you. Let's go in here to the gear fund and we're gonna go from 473 to 483. Look at us go. Dude, you the man. Everybody, hey, by the way, everybody go sub to uh, Super Deluxe. He makes awesome content. Unlike me, he makes proper, like, edited stuff that's, you know, more viewable than my two or three hour rantings and ravings. Hey, Rollins is up in here. What's up, brother? Uh, I did not design this print. This is a, uh, this is from BQE. Uh, this is the Rip Squeak Micro. This is the best three inch frame I've found uh, that's currently in, in manufacturing. And yeah, this, uh, this, <laughs> This TPU mount setup is one of the things that I really like about this frame, to be honest. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a redesign from the, not a redesign, but it's kind of the same thing as the, uh, the Rotorius Zoot, which is where I first noticed it. And I've actually been using this 3D print on all of my glides uh, for a long time. And it just works really, really, really well. Puts the antenna up at a 45, and then it gives you the option of running a, uh, an Immortal L with a Crossfire Nano, or in this case, uh, El Cheapo RXSR. Um, Frank Nicholas says, should have used Milli Tie instead of Zip Tie for the VTX. So the problem with that would have been those Milli Ties are stretchy, and I don't want that to be stretchy because that'll let the VTX and the receiver move around. Um, I want them to be held nice and tight. Um, but you did just remind me to put those Millie ties in my uh, in my Amazon cards, which is awesome because I would have totally forgotten those and been pissed. Millie tie. I guess it needs a uh, dash in between. What the hell? Why can't I find them? Uh, search all, M-I-L-L-I-E, right? M oh, no, 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 M-I-L-L-I. Nope. Um, let me Google search it. There we go. M-I-L-L-E, got it. M-I-L-L-E. Hey, there they are. Uh, dorm. Seventeen dollars. Jesus. That's better. Oh yeah. Damn. And they look a lot skinnier than the wrap straps. Give him a shot though. Oh, there we go. Pack of 10. 10.32. Cool. Add to cart. All right, good deal. Uh, drone Pilot says my antennas don't rip out, they get smashed, and the case uh, with the element fractures on the singularity antennas. Uh, painful because they're so good, so I try not to hit overhead wires. Um, if you're having durability issues uh, with the Singularities drone pilot, try the OCPs. The OCPs, uh, I talked to Hugo from uh, TrueRC about that because I was having the same issue. Um, the reason, so the, the, the singularities being so small, the tolerances are really tight, and uh, he specifically designed the OCP to be a little bit bigger so the tolerances aren't as tight, and he also designed it to be more basher friendly, um, and, that's, and it's cheaper. It's 12 bucks instead of 20 bucks. So, um, and I've had really good luck. I think three of the four glides are on OCPs and there's only one left on the Singularity. Um, I've been through like $200 in the Singularity antennas, man. I've broken so many. Um, Hillside FPV says, uh, maybe you have uh, STL for a GoPro session and a Hero 6-8 mount uh, for the glide MFG, Hillside FPV. Uh, I don't, Hillside. I buy my TPU from BMC3D and from Brain3D. Uh, 
Brent and Brian, uh, those guys are awesome. I, I gladly support them. Uh, their print files are also b better than any of the other print files that you're going to find, like specifically on Thingiverse. Um, and what's important about that is that when you start smashing a, a $160 Session 5, having a little bit better, you know, spending like 20 something dollars on a, on a, uh, a mount that's got more protection could potentially save you 160. So it's, it's well worth it in my opinion. Uh, Grant R says, do you have any experience with Pyro Drone Hyperlite 1103.5, 12,000, 22 KV, uh, motors? Think about putting them on an 85 build. I do not. But on an 85 build, you're going to want something a little bigger than that. You're going to want like a 1203 or a 1204, maybe even a 1303 or a 1304, Grant. Um, so, yeah, I would skip those for sure. Um, drone Pilot says, the OCP are durable, but I can't, uh, but I can't get long range. Oh, wow. Um, I haven't noticed that about them, uh, but I don't fly long range, so I wouldn't. Uh, Drone Pilot also says, uh, so I'm trying the carbon version of Singularity. Hopefully they'll last in a I didn't even know that was a thing. Uh, Michael Rollins is a fan of BMC 3D. Uh, yeah, his, Brent's prints are so good. Oh my god, his prints are just the absolute best. Uh, uh, Michael, everybody wants to know when the, uh, the interview will be up, so now you're on the spot. <laughs> if you don't know, it's totally okay. I've told everybody that it's, uh, it's worth the wait. Um... All right, and I, and hopefully you got a bunch of subs. I've been I've been sending people over for the past couple days, um, telling them if they, if they don't go sub to you that I'll smash them with a hammer. Um, so you know. All right, cool. We're good to go, and so we got twenty-ish more minutes minutes before bot. Uh, I'm going to jump off as soon as nine o'clock rolls around. Likely Sunday, assuming that I have time to edit. Very cool. Very, very cool. There you guys go. Straight from the man himself. If you don't go sub to him, you're dead to me, and I'm going to beat you with a hammer. Uh, so, this is all nicey niced up. Um, I think we're pretty much in a good spot. And this this squid I pulled out of another rig... So I can kind of put the top plate on, more than likely. I mean, there's very little chance that uh, that there'll be any issues with this. Um, off stream, I'm going to zap the, uh, the motors up to this ESC. And this thing will be up in the air. Maybe for the weekend. What's today, Friday? Yeah, shit. Maybe I can get this up in the air the week this weekend and uh, get you guys some flight footage for uh, Micro Monday. Still trying to figure out the best way to to kind of secure the back of this mount. I've just been using little old. Oh wait, no, I can use a little bit bigger of a uh, of a zip tie. I'll bet. Do I have a little bit bigger of a red zip tie in here? Maybe just one. Come on. Please just be, oh yeah, 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 here we go. Here we go, oh, I got a bunch of these, okay, cool. Uh, so yeah, I don't know, it, it's secured in the front here, uh, but then it's, it's. I like just putting another little, uh, another little zip tie in the back, just to make sure that it doesn't, like if I really nose it in, um, which I shouldn't be doing when the, when the Insta360 is on it, but, I mean, you guys know how I fly. So yeah, if I nose it in really hard, uh, there's a chance that this mount could could basically like rotate forwards. Although man, it is pretty solid. I don't I don't really know about that. I don't know. I, I did this on the other one. It makes me feel better. So I'm gonna do it on this one as well. So here's what I'm talking about. I'm just gonna run this zip tie up like this. And Wait, no. I want to run this the other way. Yeah, I really need to run this the other way. Quick decision. Get in there, man. Come on. Eh. There we go. Cool. 
All right, so this will hold that uh, GoPro mount. I'll throw the rear screws in, and then we will call it a day. And uh, everybody can go and watch Bot get his uh, bot on. I don't know what's he up to tonight. Anybody know what uh, what DJ's doing tonight? Yeah. So this is just uh, this is, I don't know. I don't know if this is really necessary, but um, it makes me feel a little bit better. Just seems like it makes an awful lot of sense. Zap it up and zap it out. Uh, Schwer Gustav says, do you run arm guards on this little guy? I certainly do. Uh, only on the front. That, well, actually, no, I won't be. Because these are the prototype arms. And uh, Bill has not had a chance to make new arm guards for this yet. So these are the pro well, actually these are not prototype arms anymore. You can buy these arms uh, that have the 9x9 and the 12x12 mounting. I'm gonna have to bug Bill uh, to uh, to design us a new set of uh, arm guards for these arms because these are a little bit bigger since they have the uh, the 12x12 mounting. So yeah I guess I won't be running these. I didn't even realize that. Uh, I would like to though. I would definitely like to. I uh, I always run arm protectors on the front arms of my rigs because I fly very very low to the ground, like as often as I possibly can, and that ends up you end up scraping the the end of the arm over and over and over again, and it just chips away, chips away, chips away, and eventually it'll uh, it'll wear the carbon away all the way to the uh, to the motor mount hole, and that ain't good. That is not what you want. So yeah, there we go. A motorless, ready to fly, rip squeak micro. The best three inch build in the world. Uh, run cam hybrid on board, and it's also set up for a, um, where the hell is it? Where's the mount? Uh, also set up for a um, Insta360 Go, either up front, or in the back and let me show you that if i can find the effing tpu there it is there it is so insta this is the lightweight insta 360 go mount um but yeah so you can run that that guy actually it goes this way i uh, can run that guy up front or they've got this they've got this and, and you can run this one up front too right you can run that, but I hate when it's really tall like that. Uh, what I use this mount for, you would never run both, but uh, this mount down here, and then you put it up at like a 30 degree angle. And believe it or not, with the lens down here on the bottom, this is a really cool looking camera view uh, because the, the top part of the, the camera view is the frame, but then it looks right ahead, right? I mean, you, you fly like, here, let me show you on this. Make much sense over here. Um, it sits like that, and you go flying forward with it. You go flying forward, and like, you see? See, the, the, the camera lens will be down by my mouth. So you get like a little bit of the frame, the bottom of the frame in view. But it looks really cool. It's really, really cool. Uh, Pain FPV says, that needs to be slammed so bad. Um, so this is absolute, as with all my rigs, um, this is at the absolute minimum uh, standoff height. Uh, the Runcam hybrid camera at 30 degrees of up tilt requires 28 millimeter standoffs. Um, my glide builds are actually all the way down on 15 millimeter standoffs, which I was able to do once the, all these nano cameras came out and, and got kind of good. Um, so yeah, man, you're in the right place if you like slammed builds. I am a lunatic about getting deck height as low as possible. Um, but yeah, uh, on most builds, the camera, on the, most of my builds at least, because I, I put my, uh, my electronics really close together, typically less than a millimeter away from the, um, from the, the highest points on the boards, um, the camera is almost always the, the limiting factor for the height of the standoffs. Look at that! Rip squeak number two. Well, friends, yeah. See, this one is on the on the old school arms with nine by nine mount motors. 
Uh, but these 1306 motors are nowhere near as good as these uh, 1504 Brother Hobbies that are going on this guy with the, with the new arms. But there you guys go. That is going to be the end of the uh, workshop section of this, uh, of this here live stream. Oh, wow. Two hours and 20 minutes. Look at this go. Uh, chat, what are, you, uh, what are you up to? Let me get caught up and then we'll shut this mother down. Uh, Huckleberry says, if you pull zip tie, it will self-tighten. Yeah. I know. Uh, Drone Pilot says, having a problem finding those 1306 motors with 9x9 mounts? Where did you say again? Sorry for asking. No worries. Uh, my RC Mart. My RC Mart. Dot com. There you go, brother. Uh, <clears throat> Jesus. Rob Axison says, thank you for all the content. Stay safe. Thanks, brother. Uh, Michael Rollins says, we never even talked about your flying in the interview. I've seen you do some mind-bending mind stuff, man. So good. Thanks, brother. Yeah, we didn't. Um, we were pretty focused on something that's pretty important. I, I, I'm fine with that, man. I, I, I was talking in the chat earlier um, about how, like, you know, originally you'd, you'd approach me potentially talking about like the business side um now that i'm doing this full time and everything and i i just i wasn't i like i was just way more interested in that i just thought that it would be way better for the community and the world in general for us to to hit on mental illness um because i knew that that you struggled um i didn't realize you had bbt i thought uh you just had um uh depression but um yeah i don't know i feel like what we talked about has much more value um than uh just bullshit about flying. We can always bullshit about flying. <laughs> um, I'll give you something super mind bending at the at the end of the uh, at the end of the stream in a minute here. Uh, that'll just knock your socks off, which you probably haven't seen before. Um, we actually get that ready too because it looks like chat is kind of uh, not slowing down, but um, all right. So we're gonna go here. Was it, yeah, it was March. When did the lockdown, when was lockdown? March, right? Should be this, I think. That's not it. Hold on. I'll give you something absolutely mental. Where the hell is it? There it is. I'll actually give this to you guys, you guys right now. A bunch of you guys will know this, but um, this, is for, uh, this is for Michael. Check this out. Uh, here. Throw some music on this. Genres, electronic and dance, popular, scrolling down. Hopefully this is a good song. I'm gonna click that one. No. Yeah. No. Oh, this will be good. This will be good. Uh, uh, is it this night one? Hold on. Oh yeah, he'll dig this. Here, check this out, bro.
That spot is like ma meant for me. <laughs> I love that spot so much. Oh, that was a good, I remember that pass. That's a good one right there. Down one, up through the middle, watch this. Don't bail, just stay in it. <laughs> yeah, that was a, um, that was a cool day. I wasn't like fully dialed in, but um, I was, uh, that's some of the best work I've ever done on the stickies. All right. Uh, hey, look at that, 856. Everybody go watch Bot Grinder. I think I'm caught up on the uh, chat. Havboard says, I appreciate you. Thank you, brother. DQ says, is that a Tar Seer cam? How do you like it? It's not. It is a uh, run cam hybrid, uh, which has better HD, but not quite as good of an FPV view. FPV view is totally fine on the run cam hybrid. Um, the Tar Seer is okay. Just the HD is nowhere near as good as the, as the, run, um, the run cam hybrid. Um... Uh, bu, 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 bu. Finn FPV says, I know you're doing a, a sim combat sim on Sunday, uh, but I'm working on a formation map for one of the next times we do it. Any ideas for things, features to have? Keep it under, uh, super simple for your old computer. Uh, Finn, the biggest thing is to just try to figure out how to keep everybody as tight as possible. Like, I like the railroad track idea, um, but then to put, like, like tall shit right for that sense of speed and so that as the camera as the camera drone i can like m so like the the city the reason why it's so cool in the city is because of that is because i can like go down the sidewalk and stuff and i can go up the side of the buildings and shit like that so just kind of keep that in mind i think um if you can make it as close as possible to that city but without being a city i guess that's the worst advice i've ever given um uh, but yeah, we'll just, um, we will, uh, uh, give it a shot and see how it is, for sure. Uh, that's very cool of you. Thanks for doing that, dude. That's awesome. Uh, Huckleberry says, sick rip. Thanks, brother. And cool. Caught up on chat. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Here's, uh, here's another little, little bit of flying from that spot. And... I'll see you guys tomorrow. This has been your daily Patreon uh, rip. Rip? No. Live stream. Uh, if you want to support me, I am doing this full time. I do need everybody to kick in a little bit. Uh, go on over to cidfpv.com. There's a bunch of affiliate links you can hit if you're doing an order on Amazon or um, FPV Crate, FPV Cycle, Get FPV, a uh, bunch of different spots. Or there's my Patreon page, Teespring, Fiverr, lots of good stuff. Um, or just hang out and click some buttons down here. That works too. Thanks, guys. Be good. Here's some more flying to some Epidemic Sounds music. Now, you guys have seen this one. Hold on. Let me go the next day. This is going to be a... This is raw. I don't know what the hell this is. Hopefully, I don't do anything stupid. Oh, 
Oh wait, no, 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 no. Here we go, here we go. This is what you guys want. This is a spot that nobody will ever fly again. Ever. Come on! Computer, come on! God damn it. Here it is. There it is. Yeah, this will literally never get flown again, unless there's another lockdown. That was a good jam, too. Ah, uh, come on. See you guys tomorrow.